Hello, and welcome to an episode of EOS Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix this ThinkPad 380ED series. It's also the, 300, the 380 series. This model in particular is just the 380ED. Well, the problem with it is uh, the, ba the memory backup. Well, the battery is dead. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. Here's a screen for the IBM ThinkPad, the 380 series. This one here particularly is the 380ED model. Now, the problem with this laptop is when you turn it on, of course you'll see it go through the boot test. Here's the IBM logo. You'll also notice how it says the memory. Well, if just below it, you'll see the error codes. It pops up two of them. Well, then it comes up with this message of error, and then the whole computer freezes. Now, if you look closely here, the error as it comes up is 161 and 163. Now, according to IBM, the error, these error codes refer to the CMOS, or the non-volatile RAM, the backup battery. Now, I have shown videos of this technique before, but those were involving uh, desktops. Well, here I'm going to show you how to do this on a ThinkPad. First thing you need to do is turn it off and disconnect the battery. Now let it sit there for a few seconds, up to a minute, let it discharge, and let it drain. You'll need to unhook your battery. Well, let's get started. You are going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, and the replacement battery. The battery for the ThinkPad 380 series by IBM use a CR1220 battery. It's a 3 volt lithium battery. As you can see here, this is the battery that I'm going to replace it with. This is all you're going to need to replace the battery. Now the, the task is very simple. Unlike some computers I've worked on. Well, let's get the battery out. To get the battery, flip this over. As you see here, your battery is this right here. You'll see the instructions on how to remove it. Now, you can replace these batteries for about 80 bucks, depending on where you order them and how much they charge for shipping and handling. But I found this one here for about 80 bucks. Well, the person that wanted me to look at this laptop, didn't want me to replace it, that they're just going to leave it pl plugged in. To change the battery, just unlock chat, you'll see this piece right here, and you just grab a hold up and pull up. Well then all you have to do is push it backwards and you'll see how it unlocks the battery. And then you just grab it from the side, and you simply just pull out the battery. And to put it back in, you just do it in reverse. This battery here is shot, but they didn't want the battery replaced. Next thing we need to do is once you have your laptop shut down for 30, 30 seconds or more, now we can remove the old battery. To do that, You'll need the small Phillips screwdriver. This compartment right here, you'll notice it says Windows 95. It's got their, their sticker on here for the OEM. There's a screw just right here, and it's a Phillips. Just remove the Phillips, 
Doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. They're fairly easy to get out. Once you have it loose, you can get your flat screwdriver, the small one, and you'll see a little indent right here next to the screw. Just carefully insert the screw or the flathead into the latch to lift the lid, just like this. And it actually comes off. Now you don't want to lose the screw. You want to keep the screw in there and just set it to the side. Now, if you're not sure, these do contain information as to what battery is in there and uh, information of caution and stuff when you replace these batteries. Be sure you follow the cautions. Next thing we're going to do is be sure that you do not touch anything in this board. Here you have your memory module. This is system memory. And right next to it is your battery. This is the battery we need to change. Now, be sure you're in a grounded place. You have no static buildup on you whatsoever. And be sure not to touch anything in this board. Next, you can take your simple, your small flat screwdriver. You'll notice that the screw, the, this is a cover that holds the battery in. Well, if I could zoom in, I'll give you a closer look. And you'll notice that the battery has a cover on here. Well, this is fairly simple. All this does is keeps it inserted. Now, you need to be careful. This is spring-loaded. So you want to keep your finger on top of it. Take your flat screwdriver, easily push it, get it in between the cover, as I did here, and easily push it back to where it clears the cover. Just like that. And that's how you get your battery out. Now, make sure that you take notice of how these batteries go in. You need to make sure the orientation of these batteries. The positive, where you see the writing and stuff, should be facing upwards. Facing to you. Don't insert them back upside down like this because it will damage the motherboard. Be sure you insert it the same way you got it out. And that you have the writing on top with the plus sign. Next, get your new battery. Be sure not to drop it in the motherboard. And all you have to do is gently insert it back, like so. And just gently push it inwards and then push down. And you'll hear a click. Just like that. And there you go. Now, for these laptops, there are no jumpers to reset. Once the battery was removed, it automatically reset the BIOS. Now, when you start this computer back up, you will have to go in there and reset your uh, time clock or your clock. And that's all there is. You just make sure that it's in there snug. Don't touch anything else in the board. Now, all we need to do is replace the cover. Like so. Be sure you get it into the correct position. And it should fit snugly right back down onto the board. Now, as you can see here, as I up close, you see the screw. And right here is the indent to where you get your screwdriver in to lift the lid up. Now you can just get your flat screwdriver back in, tighten it down. You don't want to tighten it too tight because you don't want to strip out the threads. Then you'd really have a hard time. Now you can reinsert your battery. 
Here is the latch I was referring to. Now all you need to do, if you do replace your battery, it's fairly simple. Just take your old one out. They've got part numbers on these that you can go buy to order you a new battery. And all you have to do is insert the battery in the same position as it came out, as you see here. Here's the power pins, and there's the power pins. You also have your indents here. So just make sure you insert it correctly, and then gently push down, just like that. Then take your latch. Move it back where it latches over to the battery again, and then push down, and you'll hear it click. This will lock your battery back into place. Now, all you got to do is plug your computer back up. If you are replacing the battery, be sure that you let your battery charge before you turn your computer on. And you should let it charge for at least 18 hours or more before you start using the battery on its own. This is to ensure that your battery gets a full charge. Lithium batteries lose a charge on their own, so when, before you start using your new battery, be sure you charge your battery. Well, let's turn this computer on and see how it works. Okay, now we're back at look at the screen. Now, you may see other error messages that's coming up because you just replaced the battery. So, let's turn the computer on. There's the IBM. Now, it does come up with 163. It may come up with 173. It just depends. Uh, all it means is that the configuration was lost and you just have to uh, re-enter it. The 163 still shows up. This is because the time clock is um, is wrong. So just enter, uh, press up the enter key. And you just go ahead and reset your time. Which I'll put, uh, come up here. 2012 month is August and the day is the 31st and then you can just put whatever time it is uh, let's see here 1503 and we can just leave it like that I'm not picky about it the person who owns a laptop can do it, set it whatever time they want. And then once you get your time entered, then you press enter again. Now the system will reboot. Now if no more errors pop up, you should be good to go. And there we go. Now we're starting up Windows 95. Okay, now to enter BIOS or the Easy Setup program, as soon as you turn on your computer, hold the F8 key down or the F1 key down. You'll see the IBM ThinkPad, they're doing the post check. Be sure you're holding that F1 key down. And here it brings up your Easy Setup. Now here is where you make you go in here and check your settings. Most of the time you can use the default settings. We'll go under configuration. You can check your memory. Shows you how much is installed and how much is usable. You can check your system board. Gives your model numbers power and management, all the versions of the system. Then we go over here to initialize. What that will do, 
Uh, I'm not familiar with these ThinkPads, but I think that uh, recessed a hard drive. I'm not sure. But I'm not going to screw their computer up. I haven't worked on one of these things in decades. Now you can go over here and choose Startup. Now, Startup basically identifies as to uh, what order you want the computer or the bootloader program to boot your computer. Now this one here, I have uh, the hard drive set up because that's where everything's stored. And then you can go to uh, a CD-ROM drive and then go to a floppy drive. This is the order in which... So what happens is if the hard drive fails, then the next thing it'll go to the floppy drive or the uh, CD-ROM drive. Well, if it can't find a boot record there, then it goes to the floppy drive. So this way it gives you uh, a backup option just in case your hard drive fails. Now you can always go in here and reach and reset it if you decide to, and it gives you the choices that you can use. Once you're done there, you can choose OK. And you're pretty much done. Now here you can do a test. Now the test you can run to check to make sure that everything is working. And here, let's check the, it checks to make sure that it's working. And you get all the system board, your memory, your display, hard drives, um, your parallel connections for your printer. Uh, it gives you everything that you want to do to test to make sure that nothing's wrong with it once you replace your battery. Now, once you're done, you can choose Exit. You can uh, go back to fig Configure if you need to do anything there. If you're done, just click Restart. Then Confirm OK. And there you go. Now your ThinkPad is repaired has a brand new battery in it well this concludes this video I showed you how to change the backup battery in a ThinkPad 380ED or the 380 series now it's a pretty simple job as I showed you and if you want to change your lithium battery, you can get those for about $80. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.